Hello again everyone, this is Tripoli3 and this is the third lecture video that I'll, I'll be uh, discussing online with everyone. The topic for this lecture is circuit equivalence. So the subtopics are these, principle of equivalence from bigger circuits to smaller circuits, series and parallel connections of devices, source transformation, and what we call the Thevenin theorem. The objectives of this, le of this lecture is shown in the screen. Basically, we, need, we want to expand our KVL and KCL and look at the bigger picture on uh, circuit analysis. Again, let's look at the power system. As you know, this is a big circuit. Uh, a lot of connections and loads and resistances. This is your generator, your substation, transform, source transfer, oh, sorry, uh, transformers. These are your establishments. And how do you basically solve the power consumed by each house? If each house has a lot of devices connected, like your uh, laptops, phones, PCs, your refrigerator, your television, etc., etc. So let's go back again to what we call a circuit equivalent of a house. So all our devices can actually be modeled as just a resistor, inductor, and some what we call back EMF or a voltage developed from spinning motors. Such spinning motors can be found in washing machines and a lot of inductive devices. So we can model a house like so. All our devices can just be uh, summarized by what we call a resistance, a Thevenin resistance and a Thevenin inductance. Also a Thevenin voltage. And the whole house will be measured from these two terminals right here. What is this circuit then? This circuit represents the source from your power generator from here that is already transformed through the transformers and simplified by this expression right here. So that's, where, that's what we call an equivalent circuit. Two electric circuits are said to be equivalent with respect to a pair of terminals if Basically, V1 is equal to V2 and I1 is equal to I2. That's it. The circuits are equivalent if their currents and their voltages are equal. So, that means circuit 1 and circuit 2 is equivalent if that is the case. So, take note. So, let me just highlight that. End. V1 and V2 and I1 and I2 should be the same at the same time. So that's the purpose of this AND statement here. If one is not true, therefore circuit 1 and circuit 2 are not equivalent. So what does this uh, give to us? A bigger circuit can now be simplified into just a smaller circuit equivalent. Thereby, there, there, therefore, simplifying our analysis. If we uh, simplify the circuit, then we can actually, uh, we can actually, what, uh, what do you call this? We can actually, well, we can actually simplify the analysis. So. Our uh, motors and our uh, refrigerators, televisions, laptops, PCs, air conditioners can now be just modeled by a simpler circuit like this. So um, a special case of your circuit equivalence would be a series and parallel connection. A series connection if there are two elements connected in the same branch. Okay, so this is one branch, if you recall, and uh, these two 
since uh, this node right here does not have any other branches connected to it, then the current passing through them is equal. Therefore, we can say that they are in series. Okay? So if there's a branch right here, and it has a current flow right here, let's say, sorry, let's say that's I sub O, there you go. Then these two elements are not in series anymore since by KCL, this current right here, let's say that's I2, that is equal to what? The current I minus the current I0. Okay? So we can say they are, they are in series if they have the same current and they are connected in the same branch. Okay. Now for parallel connections, two or more connected elements are in parallel if they have the same voltage across them. How do you quantify if they are parallel? Well, you just need to check if they're both connected to the same node. Okay? So in this case, these three elements are connected to the same two nodes right here. Let's label that element, uh, node A, and this will be node B. Since this element is connected to node A and node B, this element is connected to node A and node B, and also this element is connected to node A and node B. Therefore, these three elements are in parallel. Let's look at the uh, case of uh, resistor as the circuit element. Resistors in series actually add up. How do we know that? So we want to... Uh, we want to simplify this large circuit right here, which are composed, which is composed of n resistors. How do we simplify that? Well, actually, we can model it as just one resistance. How do we get the value of that resistance? Well, we can derive it actually. So, by principle of equivalence the same voltage should be flowing across these terminals right here. So same voltage and here. So as you can see, actually they have the same voltage, V sub S. And the same current must flow through these two circuits for us to say they are equivalent. How do we do that? Well, we need to make the currents equal. Okay, so let's analyze this circuit right here. Take the KVL across this loop, and that would be equal to Vs equal to the sum of the voltages across these resistors right here. So just note that the current direction is from here to here. Therefore, the resistances having the same current across them has this polarity set. So it is important, again, let me emphasize this, it is important that the polarity of the resistor should be aligned with the direction of the current. And the current always flows from positive to negative on a resistor. So by KVL, we have this, and just substitute this to Ohm's law. Since they have the same current, IR1 is the voltage for V1, plus IR2, the voltage for V2, and so on and so forth. And it becomes I times the sum of the resistances R1 to Rn. So that is equal to your source voltage. Now let's look at this circuit. So if the direction of the flow of current is right here, then the polarity of the voltage is right like this. And let's say that's V, Vr. Okay, let me just write that. There you go. So it's something. Okay, so Vr, then... If we take the KVL on this loop, right here, we get Vs is equal to Vr. And by Ohm's law, Vr is equal to I times R equivalent. Therefore, Vs is equal to I times R equivalent. So, if they have the same current, and this is the same voltage, then we can equate these equations right here. If we equate these equations, the I would just cancel with each other. And we can say that for the resistors in series, well, the resistances just add up. 
you have any questions, you can leave a comment on the video lecture. Now, for the sisters in parallel, for the sisters in parallel, well, basically, all the resistances are connected to the same, to the same node. So, how to examine that again? Let's look at the node. The whole node is connected like this. So, the whole node is all of this. All the connections right there. So, and also, another node can be defined through this connection right here. So, all these resistors are connected in parallel. Let me just delete that. There you go. So, let's define then what we call the conductance G. A conductance G is equal to the reciprocal of the resistance. Okay? So, that's 1 over R1 in this case. There you go. So, the conductance is just the recipro reciprocal of resistance. Then, we have modified the Ohm's law. So, instead of V is equal to IR, since R is equal to 1 over G, then I is equal to V times G. Okay. So, now we use KCL on this node. So, the sum of the current going in. So, there's a current going in because of IS. The sum of the current going in is equal to the sum of the currents going out. So, the sum is I sub S equal to the sum of I1 plus I2 plus until IN. Okay. Now, we, uh, we have a voltage developed because of that uh, current going in the network. So, if we want to know what is the equivalent resistance or equivalent conductance of that, Again, we need to make sure their currents are equal and their voltages are equal. For us to say they are circuits in equivalent. Okay, so the current going in is equal to the sum of the currents going out. And using Ohm's law, the current across this first resistor right here is equal to the voltage times G1. And the current, oh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, right. The, the current across this resistor is the voltage times its conductance, G2. And so on and so forth. Take note that they have the same voltage because they are resistors in parallel. Therefore, we can factor out that voltage and get this expression right here. Where the current going in is equal to the voltage developed across these resistors times the sum of their conductances. And again, we do the same analysis here, just Ohm's law. There's a current going in. Okay, there's a current going in this resistance. Then that current is equal to the voltage across that resistor times the equivalent conductance. And again, since we want them to be equivalent, this should be equal to this expression right here. And since the voltages are equal, then the equivalent Conductance is equal to the sum of the conductances of your resistors. Okay? And since the conductances are uh, reciprocal of the resistances, then let's just substitute that. The reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the resistors in parallel. A special case is uh, calculated using two resistors. Okay? And on your calculator, you can actually do this to get the equivalent of two parallel resistances. Now, for example, you need to find the power supplied by the voltage source. If you want to know the power supplied by the voltage source, we don't care what is inside the circuit. We don't care about the voltage V2. We don't care about I2. We don't care about I4. We just need to know the power. How do we compute the power? It's equal to I sub S times 12 volts. Okay? So, we just need to solve the equivalent resistance of this network right here. And we'll get this uh, current through Ohm's law. And we can get the power supplied by the voltage source. Okay. So, how do you solve that? Well, first, you take the parallel of 3 ohms and 6 ohms. 
So how do we get that? So the parallel of 3 ohms and 6 ohms is equal to this equation right here which is equal to 3 over 6 and equal to 1 over 2. Therefore, the equivalent resistance is equal to 2 ohms. So now, this circuit just becomes one re big resistance that is 2 ohms. How do I know if they were parallel? Well, again, let's examine the nodes, as you can see. So they are connected to the same two nodes. Now we can actually delete them. And now we just left we're just left with 4 ohms and 2 ohms. And now they are in series. How? If I put a current across this resistor, this current the same current has no nowhere to go but across the 2 ohms. And it exits on this branch right here, on this node right here, sorry. And it has nowhere to go. Therefore, these two resistances have the same current across them therefore they have they are in series connection and that's just 4 plus 2 the total is 6 ohms so same logic is true with this one 3 ohms and 5 ohms their uh, equivalent resistance is 8 ohms sorry bad handwriting anyway so that's 6 ohms and 8 ohms now in parallel how do I know if they are in parallel well, let's clean up. Let's redraw the circuit. Okay. So let's redraw. We have a 6 ohm resistor and a 8 ohm resistor. And then they are connected to the same node. So you can now represent this as one resistance. You can now represent this as one resistance. And this becomes this. This becomes this. Okay, so this is 6 ohms, this is 8 ohms, they are in parallel. So how do we know if they're in parallel? They're connected to the same two nodes, recall. Okay, so that's 6 ohms and 8 ohms. We can compute for the equivalent resistance of that through this equation. 1 over 6 ohms plus 1 over 8 ohms. That is equal to what? 7 over 24 and take the reciprocal of that the equivalent resistance is 24 over 7 there you go so please verify so that would be something like this okay so this is the equivalent resistance of this network and now we can compute for the power how first we need to solve for the current so by doing kvl this circuit is now simplified to just your source and your resistance. There you go. Okay. So source and resistance do KVL. If this is your current flow, then the voltage developed across the resistor is something like this. So that becomes 12 is equal to the equivalent resistance times the current flowing through it, which is IS. So how do we solve for IS? Well, if we take the KVL, that's the voltage across the equivalent resistor. Let's say it's V1. Therefore, V1 is equal to 12 by KVL. And that's the voltage across the resistor. Sorry. V1 is equal to 12 volts, which is equal to the current across it times its equivalent resistance. Oops. There you go. So 12 volts is equal to 24 over 7 times IS. And then IS can now be solved. IS is equal to 7 times 12 divided by 24. That's around 3.5 amperes. Okay. Just correct me if I'm wrong. So that's 3.5 amperes. Uh, just comment if I'm wrong on the Facebook thread. So 3.5 amperes, therefore the power the supplied by the source is equal to 12 volts times your IS, which is 3.5 amperes. And that is equal to what? So 12 times 
excuse me, 42 watts. And that is how you solve this example. Now let's look at the case when we have two resistors in series. How do I know if they're in series? Well, again, let's examine this current right here. Examine this current right here. It has nowhere else to go, but it is forced to go through the next resistor. Therefore, these two connected resistors have the same current. Therefore, they are in series. That's it. Okay. Now we can actually solve for the voltage across them through what we call voltage division. To derive that, well, since they have the same current, the total voltage is equal to I times the sum of the resistances. And the voltage across R1 is just defined by Ohm's law, I times R1. Voltage across R2 is I times R2. And we can actually solve for uh, V2. We can substitute this current right here from this equation above. Just manipulate that you'll get I is equal to I is equal to V over R1 plus R2. Okay, so substitute that in this equation right here, you'll get V1 is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times the voltage input plus minus V right here. Okay. Same is true with V2, but instead of using R1, we use R2 for that V2. In general, if you have N resistors in uh, series, you can get the voltage at the Mth resistor by this equation. So you have the total voltage across the uh, resistors in series. The voltage at the Mth resistor is equal to the ratio of the Mth resistance, the resistance of the Mth resistor divided by the total resistance on that series connection, on that uh, chain of resistances. Another one is current division. Current is divided if we have resistors in parallel. Take note that they have the same voltage. Then, we can solve for the uh, the current across this, the um, resistor in parallel through, well, it's also the same process. Again, the current is equal to V times the sum of all conductances of the in this case, since there are just two resistances, just add the two conductances, G1 plus G2. And the individual currents of each is also defined by Ohm's law. Since they have the same voltage, it's just V. So we can solve for, or we can actually uh, substitute this V as a function of the current input, so the current going in the circuit. So that is through, uh, that is through uh, just cross-multiplying this equation to the other side. And you can actually get the current on the ith branch, in this case the first branch, that is equal to the ratio of the conductance divided by the sum of all conductances times the current going in. Same is true with the second branch. And in general, for M resistors in parallel, the Mth current or the current at the, at the mth resistor is equal to the current going in the network multiplied by the ratio of the uh, conductance of the mth element divided by the sum of all conductances for the resistors in parallel. So, for example, find V out in the speaker circuit below. So, we have 2 millivolts of input right here. And how do we know the value of V out? Okay. So, okay. To solve that, well, first you need to get Vx. Since Vx defines the value of the current right here. Okay. So, Vx is equal to, how do you solve it? Well, that's just voltage division. You just divide Vx between... 500, oh, sorry, you just divide this 2 millivolts between 500 ohms and 2 kilo ohms. So the voltage across Vx, well, if you don't know uh, the voltage division formula, you can always derive it by doing KVL in this loop right here. But I'll just go and do voltage division. So Vx is equal to the ratio of the resistance of Vx divided by the total resistance of the resistors in series. So that is equal to 
So Vx would be so Vx would be equal to 2 kilo ohms divided by the sum of the resistances times the voltage input which is 2 millivolts. So that's 0 0.02 0 0 2. and that is now equal to 2000 over 2500 times 0 0 0.002. So uh, where's the calculator? I'll just put it on screen. There you go. So 2000 divided by 2500 times 0 0.002 and that is 1.6 millivolts. Oops. There you go. So now Vx is 1.6 millivolts. And we have the current here is defined by Gm times Vx. So that's Vx times Gm, G, yeah, Gm given as 1.6 amperes for, per volt. Then the current input, let's say it's Im. The current input is equal to 1.6 millivolts multiplied by 1.6 amperes per volt. So this is amperes per volt or it's actually also the same as milliamperes per millivolt. And that is now equal to the current is now equal to 1.6 times 1.6. Let's use the calculator. 2.56 milliamperes. So that's 2.56 milliamperes. Now we need to know what is the voltage across this resistor right here. Since they are in parallel, this resistor and this resistor, how do I know again? Well, they are, sorry, let me delete that. Well, they are connected to the same node. So we can actually solve for the voltage. This voltage right here is equal to the voltage right here since they are in parallel. Well, I can just collapse it to one resistor. So the equivalent resistance of that is equal to, sorry, the equivalent resistance can be solved like this. 1 over 75,000 plus 1 over 10,000. So you can just solve that. 1 over 75,000 plus 1 over 10,000. And that is 1 over the equivalent resistance. So let me just write that. 1.133 times 10 raised to minus 4. There you go. So 1 divided by that. Oops. Let me repeat that. Okay. So that's 1 divided by times 10 raised to 4. There you go. And this is your equivalent resistance. 8,823 ohms. There you go. So this is your equivalent resistance. Then we can solve for the voltage by just what? Multiplying the current by the resistance. So V out is now defined by Ohm's law equal to the current, which is 2.56 milliamperes, times the resistance, 8,823.532, which is now equal to, we multiply that with 2.56 milliamperes. So you'll get 22,588 millivolts or 22.58 or 22.59 volts. That is your answer. Okay, let's proceed. Now, another way uh, or uh, another case of circuit equivalence is doing the source transformation. We define this to be your simplest form of a voltage source. This to be the simplest form of your current source. Okay. So we can transform this circuit to this circuit by how? How do we know if they are equal or equivalent? Well, they should have the same current and the same voltage again. How do we solve for that? Okay. 
outputs. The voltage of this uh, circuit right here is equal to what? It's equal to since this current flows here and it does not exit, therefore it has zero current. Okay? Therefore it has zero current. Then the current just flows through this resistance R. And the voltage output is equal to Is times R. So that is uh, the voltage here if it's open or there's no current going through it. And since the, the voltage here, since this is open, there's no current. Current is zero. Same as through it here. Current is zero, therefore the voltage here, V, is equal to Vs. Since the same current is flowing through the same circuit, so that's I is equal to zero, we need to make sure their voltages are equal. So the voltage here, V, is equal to Is times R, should be equal to Vs. So we know we have uh, we uh, they are equivalent if this is satisfied. So two networks are equivalent. You can actually derive that. Then uh, Vs should be equal to Ris. So any voltage source in series with the resistance, that's the implication, may be replaced, so emphasis on the replace, by a current source in parallel with the same resistance. So that is the principle of equivalence. When doing this, you may be able to simplify your circuit analysis. So for example, find the value of IS such that two circuits below are equivalent. So the value of IS such that the two circuits below are equivalent, well, again, if you forgot the formula, just know the principle of equivalence. The voltage here should be equal to the voltage here. The current here should be equal to the current here. And this is true if you connect any value of resistance here. Just make sure that you connect the same resistance to the, to the two circuits. So how do you solve for IS? Again, um, from the formula, Vs is equal to R times IS. Therefore, IS is equal to Vs over R. That's 5 divided by 10. That's 0 0.5 amperes. Okay. So let's proceed then. Thevenin's theorem is uh, stated as such. So when you consider a circuit uh, which can be represented by two, network, two networks, a linear network A and some network B, not necessarily a linear network. So any dependent source in network A is controlled by a current on network A only, and B is controlled by, well, any dependent source should be controlled by any values within network B. So that means these networks are not dependent on each other. So network A can be replaced by a voltage source, VTH, and a, and a uh, resistor connected in series, RTH. So that is Thevenin's theorem. So that just means that any linear network, network A, can be replaced by this circuit right here. So let me just delete. There you go. So basically, any linear network can be represented by this circuit right here. So any complicated network can be replaced as such. Therefore, simplifying your circuit analysis. Okay. So we can, we can replace network A by this circuit, which has what we call a Thevenin voltage and a Thevenin resistance, and connect it to network B, and still have the same uh, behavior as network A. Again, it's because of the principle of equivalence that this modeling of circuits work. If this Thevenin network is not equivalent to your network A, then the behavior of network B changes because of that. Okay. So what is VTH first? VTH is what we call an open circuit voltage from terminal X to terminal Y with network B removed. Okay. So it's not an open circuit if you connect network B at all. So you need to remove it first and make it open. What's the property of an open circuit again? If it's an open circuit, then the current passing through here is equal to zero.
There you go. Leveling resistance to equivalent resistance from terminal X to terminal Y. Looking into network A with all independent sources reduced to zero. Okay. So let's uh, have. Uh, so let's look at how to basically transform any network to its Thevenin equivalent. First, we need to remove network B. So removing that, you will have an open circuit across terminals X and Y. Two is you find the voltage across terminals X and Y. We call it the open circuit voltage. The Thevenin voltage is equal to this open circuit voltage right here. RTH is actually more complicated to find. So just note that it's just the same network, but it's open. Okay, so this is open. So there are actually three methods of solving RTH. Of course, first you remove network B. Next is you zero out all independent sources. There's a voltage source. It's, uh, it's replaced with a short circuit. Since a short circuit has zero voltage, if there's a current source, then replace it with an open circuit since an open circuit has zero current. Okay, so that's different. So now after that, you will find the equivalent resistance across terminals X and Y. And that resistance is equal to what we call the Thevenin resistance. Next is you remove network B. That's the next method. Find the open circuit voltage across X and Y. Connect X and Y using a conductor, which means you're shorting out X and finding ISC or short circuit current, the ratio of VOC and ISC is the Thevenin equivalent right here. So let's examine both methods. So uh, let's look at the circuit. So if you look at the first circuit right here, look at the first circuit right here, uh, imagine this network B is removed. Then Oh, wait. Maybe better if we use... Yes. It's better if we use this. There you go. So, if this is open, then the current across this is zero. If you take the KVL on this loop, while this is open, since the current is zero, the voltage across this resistor, or the Thevenin resistance, is zero. Therefore, the open circuit voltage is actually equal to the Thevenin... Uh, voltage of your Thevenin uh, equivalent circuit. Okay. Now, if you look at method 1 of solving for RTH. So, method 1 of solving RTH. Zero out all independent sources. What happens with that? If you zero out all independent sources, Vs or the Thevenin equivalent voltage will become zero. So if you zero that out, you can solve for R. So it's just R that is left. So now if you look at method 2, okay, if we now have an open circuit voltage, then we just need to zero that out. If we zero that out, we connect A and B with a short circuit. What's the property of the short circuit? The property of a short circuit is the voltage is equal to zero for any current that pass that passes through. So if uh, you did not turn off all the sources, then if you do KVL across this loop again, and since the current is flowing from here to here, then the terminals would have this polarity for the Thevenin resistance. Then by KVL, Vs is equal to the voltage across this resistor, and we can find that resistance by we can find that resistance by Ohm's law. So this is shorted, therefore this is what we call a short circuit current. Okay. So short circuit current, then the Thevenin resistance is equal to the voltage, the Thevenin voltage divided by the short circuit current. That's method two. Method 3 is, again, remove network B, so you have an open circuit. And between the terminals X and Y, insert a 1-volt voltage source. Okay. 
So, easy, usually it's 1 volt for easy computation. And you can now find IS, the current that will pass through the inserted voltage source. So, RTH equals the ratio of VS and IS. Okay? So, to model that, actually, well, uh, it, I think uh, I forgot to include that. You, you need to turn off all voltage sources and current sources before you insert an independent voltage source. So by turning that off, okay, so let's, again, let's look at this. There you go. So if you turn this off, this will just be a short circuit. Okay. And you connect a 1 volt source across the terminals. Okay. So if you connect this 1 volt source on this terminals right here, it will have a current flowing through this one. So let's assume it's 1 volt. It will have a current flow equal to IS. And we can actually solve the Thevenin resistance again by KVL. Since this is turned off, okay, since this is turned off, then the voltage, since the current flow is from here to here, the other way around, like this, then the polarity of your resistance is like this. You can now solve for your Thevenin resistance by what? Dividing 1 volt by IS. So you just do KVL and you actually get R right here. Okay. So method 3 actually works in all cases. Method 1 and 2, not always. So method 1 will only work if, net, if the linear network has independent sources only. Method 2 will work if it has independent and dependent sources present in the circuit, but it will not work if network A has dependent sources only. And method 3 works with all cases. So for example, find the Thevenin equivalent circuit seen by, seen by RL right here. So this RL is now considered to be your network B. Okay. So first is you find... Uh, B VTH. So VTH, how do we get that? So disconnect RL, then find the voltage across A and B. So how to do that? First, you, uh, you do KVL. So KVL on this loop here, you'll get this equation right here. So you can solve for VAB. And next, you solve for I1. So how do you solve for I1? Well, you can do KVL on the bigger loop. So note, if this is open, then the current flowing through this branch here is zero. And that means I1 is equal to the current that goes through here too. So you can solve for the, uh, the current I1 by doing KVL from this loop to this loop. And that is actually here. You'll get that it's equal to this. So I'll just skip that part and you'll get I1 is equal to 2 amperes and substitute that. You can solve for VAB, which is your open circuit voltage. To solve for RTH, since they have both, both of them have volt, are voltage sources, to solve and there are no independent sources in the circuit, you can just zero out these voltage sources and now they are now shorted like this. And you'll see that this circuit in the uh, uh, this circuit actually has uh, R1 and R2 in parallel. How is that? Since R1 and R2 are both connected to node A here, and they're both connected to node B here. There you go. This bigger one. They are in parallel. So that's 20 ohms parallel to 5 ohms. So to get that, uh, to calculate that, well, it's just 1 over 20 plus 1 over 5 and get the reciprocal, you'll get 4 ohms. And finally, this is your Thevenin equivalent circuit. So that's 4 ohms as your Thevenin equivalent and 100 volts as your Thevenin voltage.
So last example for this lecture is to find the equivalent resistance seen by the battery across the terminals. So uh, if you look at this monstrosity, it looks daunting. But actually, you can simplify that. So again, this is node A. And this resistor is connected to node A. This resistor is connected to node A also. And connected to node B. They're both connected to node B. Therefore, this is parallel with this, as you can see right here. And node C is the black one. And this 2 ohms is connected to node B and node C. And that is this and this. Therefore, they are also in parallel with each other. And finally, you'll get uh, this is 1 ohm. You can actually simplify this. This is 1 ohm. This is 1 ohm. How did I get that? 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, 1. And the reciprocal of that is 1. So it's 1 ohm. This is also 1 ohm. They are now in series. So they become this circuit right here. There you go. Since this is node A, node B, and this is node C. Okay. 1 ohm and 1 ohm. These are now in series because the current passing through this resistor will be forced to flow through this resistor right here, thereby making them have the same current. So these two are in series. Okay. Since these two are in series, we can just add the resistances. And it becomes 2 ohms. And that circuit becomes something like this. The node B disappears. And we are left with node A here and node C here. So you can see both the resistors, this 2 ohm resistor and this 2 ohm resistor, are connected to both node A and node C. Therefore, they are in parallel. Since they are in parallel, you can solve for the equivalent resistance. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. Take the reciprocal. Also, 1. And the answer is 1 ohm. If you have any questions and comments or anything unclear about this video lecture, just comment it on Facebook and we'll discuss there. See you next meeting.